Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Tim Carter. This is Ask the Builder. <laughs> How are you today? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I didn't know if there was going to be a live stream or not today. I just made it back here a little bit ago. I had a uh, last minute adventure this afternoon down along the Pemmy Jawasset River in New Hampshire, central New Hampshire. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Wow. I went out to do ham radio with uh, my mentor, my outdoor radio mentor, Jim Cluett, and we had a spectacular time. It was a wonderful day here. I Sunny. I don't know. I don't know that it made it to 50. It was a little chilly, but it was it was a nice day. Oh, hey, how you doing? Um, FSU, Florida State grad. <laughs> I finally figured it out. <laughs> Florida State. I'll call you Florida man. Oh, well, thanks very much. Um, History is kind of my, uh, it's kind of a side hobby. I um, really enjoy history. I mean, the trouble is sometimes we don't get, here's what you need to remember about history. You know, the winners write history, <laughs> not the losers. All right. So in many respects, we, we um, you know, we have a kind of a distorted view of history. The, the, some of the best history, as long as you can still find it, if they're not scrubbing it, out of the libraries, uh, a lot of people don't know this about history. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about plumbing vent flashings in just a minute. Um, the back in the days when there were real journalists, you know, I, I'm I'm a syndicated newspaper columnist, so I'm part of the working press. But unfortunately, my profession has just gone down the toilet. I mean, there aren't many really good journalists left. You know, e ethical, honest. And but but back in the day, go back 100, 150 years ago, even 200 years ago, when newspapers were being printed, uh, newspaper reporters they were the first, they're the first level historians, be, because good reporting, in other words, if the reporters were doing their job, they were curating what happened, and and so you, so if you really want to get an idea of what happened in the last 150 years, you got to go sift through old newspapers. That's where you have to go. Um, like <laughs> sugar, we have <laughs> sugar. Yeah, I know. I I just saw the S U G R. You know, I I didn't bother to look at the full acronym. Uh, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, crutch word, crutch word. That's one of my crutch words. Anyway, you say a crutch word when your 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 mouth has gotten a little ahead of of your brain. Uh, here's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, for sure. Uh, remind me if I if I forget. Um, I'm going to talk about what my daughter did. She just I've been on the phone with her uh, about her car situation. She got um, psychologically raped and abused on Monday by two Honda dealers, uh, one in Long Beach, California, and one nearby. Uh, horrible, bitter experience. So now I'm going to tell you what she's going to do. What she well, what she already did. She just did something. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the radio experience of what I did today. A lot of fun. So much fun. And um, I was right on the tip of my tongue. There was something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, it'll come. It'll come to me. Don't worry. And uh, if you have questions, um, just put them in the uh, chat. Uh, and, and it could be anything. It, it can be anything about your home. It doesn't matter. It uh, doesn't matter at all. The um, Let's talk a little bit about plumbing uh, vent pipe flashings. Uh, first of all, you might not understand. You might wonder, what well, Tim, just what is a flashing in general? And I think the best description I've ever come up with is <clears throat> a flashing. It's a transition material. It's it's something that connects a roof to, 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 to something that's not a roof. All right. So it's a it's like an intermediary, right? So, um, uh, in other words, a vent pipe is not a roof. You know, a vent pipe sticks up through a roof. Uh, a chimney is not a roof, so it sticks up next to a roof or through a roof. Um, you know, uh, a skylight. A skylight is not a roof. All right, it, it's a skylight. That's why they call it skylight. So, all of these things have to have flashings around them so that um, so that water doesn't get into your home. And the science of flashings was figured out hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It's not hard at all. It's nothing about it is hard. But the trouble is, is that at least in the United States, I, don't, I can't speak for, for other countries, 
we we don't have we don't have a really good platform to train young roofers on and the right way to do things. Back in the old days, you know, you went through an apprenticeship, you became a journeyman, you became a master. That, that those days are gone. That does not exist here in America anymore. At least if it does, I'm not aware of where it is, except in the plumbing field, maybe um, electricians as well. But all the other crafts, I don't know. I don't think it exists. But, you know, I'm because I'm a master plumber. So here's the thing. If you look at the picture, I put a link at the top here. I'll give you the link again. Um, I want you to just, I want to have this link in here a couple of times during the live stream. I want you to look at the photograph. I want you to go here and go down and slide down. There's a video on top, and then there's a photo right below the video. And you can clearly see the flashing. And in this case, what's very unusual, the the size of the flashing is actually very close to the size of the shingles that I was using. That's that's a plumbing vent pipe on my own home. Um, I, I put that flashing in, I don't know, six years ago, maybe. The um, Plus, it's a very good flashing, by the way. It's not the crappy aluminum <clears throat> ones made by the company that begins with the letter O. All right. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. And that's my opinion, by the way. It's my opinion that they're crap. <laughs> I have to say that you have to when as long as you say opinion um when you either write when when you speak like this I could be accused of slander uh if you write something you could be accused of libel but if you say in my opinion that you're clear because here's why um opinions just in case you don't know this so when you bring an opinion for example into a discussion like if you're having a serious discussion with somebody, not an argument, a discussion, when you bring an opinion in, that's like bringing a rubber knife to a gunfight. <laughs> opinions, they, they they don't cut it in an argument. Opinions don't cut it too much in a court case either. I've been an expert witness for 25 years. All right. Understand that the flashing, imagine that that flashing didn't have a hole in it. All right. Imagine it did not have a hole in it. It was just like that solid piece of metal. So it's basically a shingle. <laughs> the flashing is a shingle. It's just that sometimes they're not exactly lined up the way they should be. The bottom of the flashing does not always line up with the bottom row of a shingle. That's OK. That's all right, because they make the flashings extra long. You need as long as you understand that the flashing acts like a shingle and it's just slightly out of position, you're golden. You're golden. And when you watch that video, the video that I just, that, that link I just put in, I'll put it in again. Um, when you watch this video, there's a video on that page. I just put the link in. It, it takes you step by step how to put it in. All right. So I'm not going to belabor how to install it right here because I've already done it. I did a fantastic job where you don't have to just listen to my words. You can actually see me install it. So that's that's uh, that's where I want you to go to see how to install it. Uh, if you have any questions about any aspect of it, go ahead and ask them in the chat right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get caught up in the uh, comments, and then um, uh, and then we'll keep moving on. Eight, uh, eight, uh, let's see, Dwayne, Dwayne, am I, I didn't I didn't put that on my cheat sheet. I'm sure it's Dwayne. Dwayne, uh, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, um, Brett. Um, from yesterday's chat about turbines. Okay, I have a few roof cap vents. What I, um, I, w you know what? Uh, I don't know how big your roof is. I would be inclined to just switch them out. I, that that's what I would do because those static, you know, those static roof vent caps, they, they do nothing. They're they're almost worthless. Seriously, they're they're like, they're so worthless. I would just switch them out and look, look, you've got most of the work done. The hole's pretty much cut. It might be the right size. You might already have the shingles cut the right the right way. I mean, you might have the turbine vent installed in 10 minutes. So I would just switch them out. That would be me. If you have any questions about anything about your home, just go ahead and type it in the chat. I'm happy to help. It doesn't matter what it is. It does not have to be about, um, it doesn't ha does not have to be about plumbing vent pipe flashings. If you have specific questions about plumbing vent pipe flashings, I'm the guy to ask. <laughs> 
I've installed countless of them, countless, both in new, remodel, whatever. And that's also a really interesting point. Realize that you can install one of these flashings in an existing roof. You don't have to put them in, in a new roof. It's easier to put them in when the roof is new and you're going, but it's not a problem to install them uh, after the fact. Uh, I have a, in fact, I'm going to try to find that column right now. Uh, cause it's, cause you may wonder with well, Tim, how do you put one in? How do you do, how, how do you put a flashing in, in an existing roof? Uh, let's see how to replace jingle video. I'm trying to find a video I did a long time ago. Um, yeah, this must be it. Once I see the preview, I'll tell you if it is or not. If it is, this basically pretty much shows you um, how to how to kind of get started on the project. Um, waiting for the preview to build. I'm pretty much betting this is it. Um, come on, YouTube, bring it on, buddy. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Boy, this is this is a funny video. This video. <laughs> if Steve were here from UK, he would be giving me all kinds of crap right now. So this video that I'm showing you was uh, is probably 13 years old. Oh no, 20, 23 years old. 23 years old. So check out my hair in that video. <laughs> the point is, if you're installing a vent pipe in a uh, in an existing roof, what you have to do is you have to actually go up in a roof and you have to take three or four or five of the shingles out of the way. You just got to take them out. And in this video that I just pasted in to the chat, I show you how to take the shingles out, show you how to take them out of there. And then once they're out of the way, then you can cut the hole, uh, put the flashing down and start to weave the shingles back in as I show you in the other video. So using those two shing those two videos, you, can, you now know how to put a plumbing vent pipe flashing in, whether it's a new roof or an existing. Don, so good, you got a question got a great question going to paint a lake cabin which is not peeling but is dull from the sun okay a ceiling uh all right simple um i've talked about this at great length in past streams but i don't mind repeating it understand what paint is paint all paints it's just glue it just glue with color and then they they add other things to make it more durable but because think about it, when you paint, when you put paint on something, if you let it dry, it sticks pretty well. Typically, that's a, that's by that's that's by design. All right. The um, the best glues, the best paints for exterior are ones that are made with a urethane component, a urethane resin. There are three general classifications of of paint. The cheap ones are vinyl acetate. That's the vinyl. You, you might see that on the formula on the can, vinyl acetate resin. The next one up is acrylic. That was that was the that was the primo paint maybe 40 years ago. And about 25 years ago, they started to bring out urethane resin. So if you've ever put clear urethane, you know, just you know, clear urethane, like on a hardwood floor or or a piece of furniture. Think, think about this. Think about like high school or college basketball floors, even professional, professional basketball floors. Those are hardwood floors and think how much traffic they get on them and abuse. And they're just your thing. I mean, think about that. Think about the abuse those floors get. You would never be walking on your, on your paint on a house. That's why your thing is such a great resin. And Sherwin Williams, the last time I checked, you have to verify this. They have a paint line called emerald, just like a jewel, you know, the like emeralds and sapphires. So emerald. So look at the emerald paint line, get a brochure, go to their website, whatever, see if it's not a urethane paint. You can also go to my website if you want to buy the paint online at Amazon. May, they may have a better photo. I'm getting a link for you. Oh, I was so happy. I knew what I was going to tell you. I, I talked about it earlier. I fixed my keyboard today, my Apple keyboard, wireless keyboard. I was so happy. There was such a great um, video online that sh this guy showed exactly how to do it. All right, here we go. This is a great photo I took in this column. Oh my gosh, I forgot about this photo. 
I took this photo in old San Juan, Puerto Rico, three years ago. It's the skinniest house in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Wait till you see how skinny this house is. It's a great photo, if I say so myself. Uh, all right, I don't know why the screen's frozen, but it is. Um, there we go. It's coming back to life now. All right. If you go to the column, I'm sure within the column, if you scroll down, you're going to see a paint can. It says you're then on. Click it, buy the paint. I mean, I get a little commission from Amazon, but it's a good paint as well. Any paint that's got urethane in it's going to do great. So anyway, Don, uh, you have to wash the cabin. You have to wash it down like you would wash your car. And I mean by that, I mean by mixing up, I would prefer, you should probably, you should use some of my stain solver, you know? If I were you, the, the, every time I paint outside, I always use this. I take stain solver, <clears throat> you know, mix it up with hot water, stir it up until it's all dissolved. Make sure it's stirred for two, three minutes. You got to dissolve all of it. Put it in a garden hand pump sprayer, adjust the nozzle, go around and mist it on the, the siding, get the siding wet with a solution, let it sit 10 minutes. And then take an RV brush. You know what an RV brush is? A recreational vehicle. In other words, if you're going to wash an RV, you don't do it with a sponge. They do it with those big brushes. Well, they're, they're nice brushes. They're, they got a lot of bristles, but they're soft. You know, soft that it's not going to scratch the paint, but it's stiff enough to get the dirt off. You know, it's not a real floppy brush. They're, they're, they're special brushes. So that's what I use. I use an RV brush on a pole or I hold it by my hand. I've had this beautiful brush that's in my garage. I've had this brush for, oh my gosh, I, I might've had it 30 years. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a high quality brush. It's unbelievable. And so you wash it and you can, you cannot just use a pressure washer. And we've talked about this before. Pressure washers do not get all the dirt off. If you don't believe me, go do this test. Take your dirty car to one of those DIY car washers that uses a pressure washer Pressure washer car, get it. I mean, get that damn nozzle as close as you feel comfortable. I wouldn't get it too close, but get it as close as you feel comfortable. All right, clean the car. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful while it's in the bay. You've rinsed it off. Okay, great. Now just pull out of the bay. Don't go anywhere. Just pull out of the bay and uh, park out of the way and uh, go check your email on your phone. And within a few minutes, parts of the car are going to be dry. And then I want you to take your finger across the dry part and you'll see the car's not clean. So if you pressure wash your house, it's not clean. And pressure washers, most people do not know how to use a pressure washer with a house. They aim it the wrong way. They start squirting water in places where water's not supposed to go. It's the worst thing you could possibly use. So just hand wash it, scrub it with that RV brush, soapy water, just use Dawn liquid dish soap, soapy, soapy water, get it nice and soapy, rinse it off with a hose, just a gentle hose. Don't blast it with your hose. Let it dry and then start to paint. I have great columns on my website about how to paint. Don't paint in the direct sun. The worst possible day to paint is when it's hot and sunny outside and breezy. Worst possible time. Best time to paint outside. Overcast day, no threat of rain. Temperature, maybe 60, 65 degrees. That is perfect. You want the paint to dry a little slower. All right. Hope that helped. Do I have a recommendation for a sprayer? Uh, I reviewed a few. Um, you can look at, just go to my website and type in the search engine, a paint sprayer. And I, I reviewed a few. They're, they're, they're okay. I mean, the, 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 I've, I've, I've used an airless one before. You just have to get the, you have to get the, um, the consistency right, or it spits the paint. I mean, my biggest problem with the sprayers are, it's and depending on the type of siding and what you have, it's like you have to, you have to spend so much time taping things off and protecting things that you could almost do it with a brush. I, I don't know. Now, the professional painters, they have special prayer spares, which are high pressure, low volume, and they're much smaller. They're almost like an airbrush, and they have much greater control of those. But that's I don't think that's something you're gonna buy. I don't, you know, I don't I don't see you buying it for just one job. Um, so I don't know. So I the answer is. I, I I reviewed a couple a few years ago and they're okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, any other questions? Uh, it I don't think you have checked in. If you look at the top when I open up the live stream, I say one of my comments is always please check in. I'd love to know who you are and what your superpowers are. All right, I need to know who I'm talking to because you might be able to help contribute to the conversation. 
And if you like what you're hearing, be sure you hit the thumbs up button. It really helps us on YouTube. So check in, please. And um, I'd like to know who you are and what your superpowers are. Please tell me. While you're checking in, I will talk about the um, this wireless keyboard. So I've had this wireless keyboard for a while. You know, it's a, it's a very thin keyboard, way overpriced. All, all Mac stuff is. Oh, well, you know what? It is. I'm not giving any more money to Bill Gates. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not giving him any more money. And um, all of a sudden today, my the R, the R, actually in my typewriter, it's the O, the letter O. It's the same on your keyboard because you, you use a QWERTY keyboard, but I use a QWERTY keyboard too, but I switch over to Dvorak. I type the Dvorak method. Um, so all of a sudden the O was not working. It would not you know, it was when I hit the O, it should hit create an R. It wasn't doing anything. So I thought, uh, and it felt like it was stuck. So I thought, okay, and God bless YouTube. God bless you. I type in how to fix Apple wireless keyboard. And there's this amazing two minute video guy shows right away how to do it. And, you know, the secret way to hold the key, how to pry it up, how to slide it out. You know, it's a very well designed thing. And if you do it wrong, you'll break it. You'll break the key. So I didn't do it. Did it right, clean the key, worked perfect as soon as I was done. Uh, so even I use YouTube too. Um, oh, so I'll, I'll, while I'm waiting for you to type a question, you have to type questions. See, just so you know, if you're new to the live stream and you've not been here before, you're the one, it, it's like I'm in neutral right now. Like if you're driving a car and you put it in neutral, you don't go anywhere. It, it, you go nowhere. <laughs> Well, unless you're going down a hill, all right? Or if you're on a hill and you let the brake up, you go backwards. Your questions, you're the you you make the live stream happen. So I don't care what question you ask, but your questions are what makes the live stream keep going. You know, so so you have to ask questions. Let's get a little warm up here. All right. Um. So here's what happened. Here's the latest on my daughter. If you happen, if you've been following the saga. I'm stuck. I can't get out of this dumb thing. Um, on Monday, my uh, youngest daughter, she moved out to Long Beach, California two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. I miss her big time. She um, she needed a car. She needs to have a car. Never had a car. Has to have a car out there. So she made her mind up on getting a Honda HRV. Uh, she goes to a Honda dealership and the one in Long Beach, and they proceed to lie to her, proceed to a $24,000 car. They want to charge her $37,000 for it. And, the, and they're just lying to her. So she's texting me while she's in the dealership. I'm telling her, don't do, don't sign anything, blah, blah, blah. Finally, I told her, get up and walk out, get out of that place. So she did. She did. She walked out. Then she went to another, she went down the road. She was in her rental car. She went to another Honda dealership. She had called them up on the phone first. And they said, oh, we only we only charge an extra $2,000 because the car market's crazy right now. Um, she gets there. They lied. They lied to her. They, no, they're trying to charge her $7,000 more. They're just liars. And then they lied to her about her credit score. You know, she knows what her credit score is. It's 785. And um, uh, they lied to her. They say, no, it's 686. And they're just they're just liars. They're hor they were horrible liars. If you if you're a car dealer, if you're a car salesman and you're a sales manager and you do this, I'm serious. I don't see how you sleep at night. I, I I'm serious. I, I don't how how can you possibly screw people like that? All right. Anyway, so she had it. She said, "I'm done with these liars." And so she did today what her what her brother did. She's got an older brother, and my son. I don't know, two years ago, two or three years ago, he he had this exact same experience happen to him and here in New Hampshire, and they just abused him. And, and I was out in the showroom when it happened. He was back. Oh, it was horrible. I'm writing about it in my newsletter this Sunday. Uh, so he went, he said, to hell with it. I'm never doing this again. So he went to Carvana and bought a car online. Uh, been It was a wonderful experience, easy. It's like buying a uh, a paperback book from Amazon is all I can tell you. It's so simple. They delivered it. They, you know, if you can have the car for a week, if you don't like it, just call them up. They come pick it back up. They give you a check. 
It's all done. It doesn't cost you a penny. So she just, she bought a car today from Carvana. So. All right. Look who's here. Look who's here. Hello. Good night. Um, hi, Will. How you doing? Um, so the, the the cluttering job was going really great this morning until my ham radio buddy called me and said, hey, let's go out. It's a beautiful day. So off the rails. So I, I, I stopped working at 11 o'clock and um, I didn't get back until about 15 till four. So I didn't get as much done as I wanted. But tomorrow's a big rain day. I'll, I'll have the whole office done tomorrow. And then I move out into the other room. Uh, no, Don, here's that's a great question. Would I use a sealer? No, you have to read the instructions on the label of the finished paint can. Whatever finished paint you're going to use, see what they say to do. They'll typically have a section. If it's bare wood, do this. If it's painted wood, do this. So just follow the instructions on the label. Don't, that, that, and that's actually a great teaching moment. You have to be really careful about ever listening to advice from somebody like me or anyone else on the internet about how to use a product. And that's what you're asking me. Like you're saying, well, do I have to use a sealer product? Well, um, the, the only person you should ever ask a question about how to use a product is the person that makes the product. And, and I'm serious. Like, And here's why. Because I don't back up the warranty. In other words, I, I don't back up the warranty of, of, of the paint. And, and the paint may have very specific instructions of what to do. So just read the label. See what it says. Yeah, I know. she. But man, <laughs> she started her first day of work yesterday. Had an amazing flipping day. Who walks into the uh, office but Tom Brady with his wife and two kids? <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello, Don. Hello, Fisher. Uh, yeah, you have, it's uh, to, to to your point. You have to be able. To, it's called the takeaway close. Not the 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 salespeople will do that to a buyer, but you as a buyer need to do it to the salespeople. You you need to you need to invoke the psychological trigger of scarcity. Remember, scarcity is the most powerful psychological trigger of all. That is why we waterboard prisoners, all right? There's a reason why we waterboard prisoners, all right? N none of this is hard. Nothing about this is hard. So when we waterboard prisoners, what are we taking away from them? What are we making scarce? Oxygen. All right, so when you take enough oxygen away, they start to sing like canaries, man. Uh, all right. Let's, let me get caught up here. Uh, Fisherman, curiosity picked yesterday. We'll email you regarding, uh, F fib. Oh, fib. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Fib was here, man. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. This is hilarious. <laughs> See, I'll tell you the story. It's, it's hilarious. It really is. So I, I was in Washington, DC on January 6th. Uh, not this past January 6th, the one before. And everything that you got, everything that you're seeing on the news is wrong. <laughs> That's, I mean, it happened, but they're not telling the truth. You know, there's an old saying, a half truth is a whole lie. All right. I've said this on other live streams. Do you know why? That I've been an expert witness for 25 years. I've been deposed hundreds of times. I've been in the courtroom on the witness stand. Here's what you say. When you, when you go into a deposition, you have to swear. You have to stand up and swear, put your hand up. You say, I swear to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Why do you have to tell the whole truth? Come on. If you have kids, you already know why. If, if, if you just get part of the story, there's a really good chance you're going to make the wrong decision. So the, the media is, 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 some of the media is not telling you any of the truth. Some of them are telling you just a little bit of the truth. What you need to know is I rode into DC that morning on the subway on the on the red line from Glenmont, the end of the line in, in to DC and to Union Station. And five five Antifa thugs surrounded me and sat sat around me. <laughs> I chatted them up. They had baseball bats in their things, they had big hammers. 
They had Trump gear stuffed into their backpacks and bags. They weren't wearing it. There, there were no pickup baseball games that morning on the National Mall. I looked. Nobody was playing baseball. Why would somebody need to bring a baseball bat to flip in Washington, D.C.? Why would somebody need to bring, bring a big hammer? There were no signs outside the Capitol help wanted to build the scaffolding for the inauguration that was going to happen in a couple of weeks. No, no help wanted signs. Why would you have to bring big, long handled hammers? Have you heard one news outlet? Have you heard anybody in the news say, oh, yeah, you know what? You know who really broke in? It was Antifa and BLM. No, you've not heard anybody. All right. So that's just part of the truth. You also, you've not seen anybody talk about the timeline, all right? That you know what time the, the Capitol started to get broken into? At about 15 till one. I've got video. I have video that I have showing the police response, the backup to get help up there. What time did Trump stop speaking? 111. How long does it take to walk from the ellipse to the Capitol building. I know. I did it twice. It takes 25 minutes. The Trump people did not even show up at the Capitol until an hour after the break-in started. You're not hearing any of that. All right. So anyway, um, within a day or two after the break-in, you know, there's thousands and thousands of surveillance cameras, high-definition surveillance cameras, you know, in, in and around the Capitol. So they started to peel off pictures of people and put it up on the FBI website for most wanted, most wanted. Like I, I you know, I, my picture wasn't on it because I wasn't right at the Capitol building. All right. So some idiot who lives just five miles away, who doesn't like me because I had written a column about this. Um, they went to the website and said, oh, they saw some picture of an old guy. Didn't even look like me. Didn't I even look like me? And said, oh, I know who that is. That's Tim Carter, lives in Meredith, New Hampshire. So two weeks later, I'm sitting right where I am right now. And I'm looking out the window. And, and I'm at the end of a road. I'm, I mean, I'm at a dead end road. And very rarely does anybody drive by, down my driveway. Uh, so this car comes down my driveway, just like a little Mazda or something. And I go, well, that's odd. You know, maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they're turning around. So I'm just kind of watching. And they... Uh, they turn around and I thought, okay, they're going to drive by. Well, they park. Two guys go out. And I'm, by that time, I'm standing up and I'm looking through the glass and, and I open up the one window and say, hey, could I help you guys? And the guy goes, and he it goes like this, whoosh, you know, he pulls out his bag, said, yeah, it's, it's uh, Mark from the FBI. We'd like to ask you a few questions. I said, sure, I'll be right down. So I went down. Turn this on right away. I got a voice recorder app, recorded the whole interview. There was no way they were going to say I ever lied to him. So uh, it lasts about an hour. Very interesting. Very interesting. Here's the most interesting thing, though. Uh, 12 days later, I filed a Freedom of Information Act to get the report, to get all the handwritten notes, all the photos, everything. They refused to give it to me. The FBI refuses to give me the, the report. They say it's an ongoing investigation. All right. Um, all right. Here we go. Let me catch get, get caught up. Um, bigot, so yeah, I got to get my passport. I got to renew my passport because uh, because my daughter they asked her yesterday, hey, do you want to do a flight to, uh, over overseas soon? So. Um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is, it, it, it was, it, it was just, um, well, you just have to understand if, if and I, I don't mean to belabor this because we can talk about home improvement stuff. If you, you need to understand that we, our justice system has gone off the rails. Um, we have a two tier justice system. If you're up above a certain level, you don't get prosecuted. You can do whatever you want. Nothing happens. Um, and and the worst thing of all is that the FBI has been politicized. 
at least at the upper echelon. I, I don't know that the guy that came here was a bad guy. He, he helped me out, gave me a cell phone number. Anytime you need help, let me know. And then once I saw that these they were collecting these people and throwing them in prison, I called him up one day and I said, hey, Mark, I'm a little worried. He said, you got nothing to worry about, Commander. He said, here's what you don't know. He said, um, when we file, when we finish the report on the front of the file, we have to we have to say what, what should happen. And on your file folder on the front of it says, no further action required. So he said, you're never going to get hear, heard from again. You, don't worry about it. You're, you're cool. Um, so, but the problem is, is that the FBI right now has been weaponized there. It, it was supposed to be, you know, you know, the, I mean, look at the, uh, what's the, uh, you, you know, the statue, the, the, of, of lady justice with the scales, what she got on her, on her eyes. She's got a blindfold. All right. Blind justice. That's the way it has to be. Well, it's not that way. It's not that way. So it's horrible. It's horrible. All right. Um, any questions about your home? Uh, happy to answer them. Happy to talk about the FBI. <laughs> you know, whatever. Happy to talk about how to fix Apple uh, keyboards. I fixed one mine this morning. <laughs> Fugitive. No, they know where I'm at. They know where to come and get me. Um, it is horrible. It, it's really horrible when you think about it. Think about this. Um Many of the people that there's, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 people still in prison who were charged, they're up in the D.C. jail. And really all they're guilty of is trespassing. Most of them did not break a window or did not. That, all that breaking window stuff was done by Antifa and BLM. All right. Um, and, and there's plenty of video out there showing the Capitol Police actually opening the doors for people. You know, it, it, it's it's a travesty. Anyway, anyway. So here are these people that are in jail and these totally bogus charges. I mean, these, I mean, they're just walking through the flipping capital. I get it. Some of the people who maybe stole the podium or stole the gavel, took that stuff out. That's, that's not right. That's a crime. All right. But just walking through the flipping capital. I mean, for God's sake, I own part of it. All right. I own an undivided one 330 millionth of that Capitol building. I do. And so do you, if you live in America, you, you own part of it. You own an undivided interest in it. All right. Um, whatever. All right. Let's talk about something else. Uh, yeah, there, exactly. The, yes, exactly. Good night. And you know all about this. You, you, you've been there. You, you've lived, you've lived this. So I, I, I really think the guy that came here, the two guys, I think they were fine. Um, I, I really do think they were, they were good people. Uh, the other interesting thing about this for what it's worth, uh, one of, I have a really good friend. He's, he's now retired. He was an ATF agent for his whole career. So a federal police officer. And, and I met him at an internet conference that I spoke at maybe 20 years ago. Uh, and we became really good friends. We stayed in touch. And, um, so after the FBI left, I, called him up. And he said, oh, really? And so he asked me a few questions. And he said, he says, I got to tell you, he said, you did everything right. You did everything right. You couldn't have, you couldn't have done it better. You know, I cooperated. I didn't withhold anything. I wasn't sarcastic, um, respectful, and, and I didn't have anything to hide. You know, there was nothing. I didn't hide it. You know, there was, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> so, um, so he said that makes it go a whole lot easier, you know. So anyway, all right, here we go. Good night. Wants to know how would you go about installing a hose faucet off existing pipe? Simple. Um, is it? I'm just going to assume it's copper. So um, go watch my um, go go watch my uh, how to. Um, copper press tool video. I've got a how to use copper press tool video. Watch that. So we have technology now. It's about eight, maybe 10 years old. You don't have to solder anymore. They have a, a tool. You have these fittings. They have a little rubber O-ring. You just cut the tubing, slide the fitting over, and there's a special tool that goes, and it just crimps the pipe. I, I just have a video of it. So just go watch my copper press tool video. And all you have to do, if you want to go to YouTube, just go to YouTube and type in Copper press tool, Tim Carter. Always type my name and 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 it'll bring up the results right away of my videos. Uh, yeah, so it's super easy. So you'll just cut a T into it. You're just 
you just have to take out probably five eighths of an inch of pipe, and then you'll slide this T in, this a, a, a copper press T, and all the fittings will be pressed. So simple. So so simple. Uh, John, make sure if, because I, I know where you live. Good night. Make sure you put in a frost proof hose bib because you live where it gets cold. So you have to make sure that the back of the hose bib is back on the inside of the wall where it stays warm. Um, John, just lost a big chunk of bank barn roof. Uh, I don't know. And had to clear stuff. Wealth of scrap lumber. Can't seem to part with it. Um, well, I mean, uh, lumber racks pretty easy to build. It's just like building a rack for kayaks. You know, you can look, if you just go online to see how kayak racks are built, um, it's just that you have to be beefier because the lumber is going to weigh a lot. So you can't be using one by threes. You know, you're probably going to be using four by fours, four by sixes as the support arms. You're going to use through bolts. You're going to diagonally brace it so the whole damn thing doesn't come crashing to the ground. So the answer is I know exactly how to build it, but I cannot describe it here. If you want to do one of my paid consult calls, Happy to do it. Happy to talk to you on the phone about how to do that. But I cannot do it here. It just takes way too long. Um, so the bank owns my... The, I, I must have missed something. Let me see here. Uh, they didn't touch any of those who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The bank owns my own, but the bank manager can't walk in time he wants to... Okay, yeah, but owns my home. I get it. Um Actually, the bank just has a mortgage. You you own the home. You just probably signed a promissory note. And um, so actually, you um, debt is just another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debt, debt is bad. Everything about debt, bad. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of us have to have it. Don wants to know, what is your thoughts on building pole barn versus stick building? Um, I'm, I'm OK with it. I'm OK with either method. It's just that pole barns, uh, the big problem with a pole barn is you, it's it's tough, you know, you're working in the air, you have to have scaffolding, you have to have one of those man lifts, uh, you have to do crazy diagonal bracing, um, you know, you have to put in, you know, your laterals, uh, it's, it's, um, it just depends on the use. I mean, if I'm if I'm just going to house livestock, I'm just going to do the pole barn. If I'm going to build a workshop, I'm probably going to stick frame it. Oh, how about I? Uh, well, shark bites one way. I don't I don't prefer shark bite. This is what I do. I I uh, I use Uponor. So that's 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 what I use. I think this is a better system than shark bite. So this is a compression ring. This blue pot, this blue tubing goes all the way up to here. I got to get my finger on it. It goes all the way up to here. And this this tubing comes, this black, this white collar comes right down on top of the tubing. And then you put a tool. And I've got, I've got a, uh, go watch my Connect Pex video. So that's the a really short video. So type into YouTube, how Connect Pex Tim Carter. Or just type Connect Pex Tim Carter. And you'll see a video of how I make this up. And um, it's oop onor, U P O N O R, U P O N O R. I just think this is a much better, much, much better system. Hello, Josh. Great you're here. Um, great that you're here. All right. Any other questions about anything? I'm happy. We've got, got quite a few people here. I think there's people that have not checked in. Um, I like it when you check in because number one, it's the polite thing to do. Number two, I want to know about your superpowers. In other words, for example, you might, you, you might type uh, in, you know, you'll have your, your YouTube name show up and then you might say, Hey, Tim, uh, Bill here, uh, retired firefighter or uh, Nancy, uh, retired school teacher, whatever, you know? Um, so, so um, hi, Vanessa. So, so check in. It's a polite thing to do I, because you, you might, once I know who you are and what your capabilities are, um, I, um, 
I can um, I can use you in a conversation. I might ask you a question. So, <laughs> Will Smith, superpower, finding golf balls. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's true. Um, so, tell me what your superpower is. I'd like to know uh, because you might help. For example, Josh. So, Josh, um, let me see if I remember. Let's see if I get this right. Um, you know a lot about surveying, I think, land surveying. I'm, I'm almost, I've got it, or I'm close. I'm damn close. Land surveying stuff. Am I right about that? Good night, drinking coffee. See, everybody's clowning around. I mean, no one's telling me they're true superpowers. You know, I mean, I got a flipping bunch of com comedians here. I'll tell you this in the comments yesterday for yesterday's live stream, got a few compliments about going off the rails and got a few compliments about the history lesson. So if you have, if you have history questions and you want to ask them, go ahead. If I don't know the answer, I'm just going to tell you, I don't know. But uh, that was, I kind of went off the rails there about an hour, 10 minutes into that live stream. I, I forget exactly what I got upset about, but uh, I, oh, I think I got upset about people not waking up and people, people just, Believing. I mean, just. <laughs> there we go. Uh, anyway, yes. Vanessa, retired military and a math teacher. Yep. There we go. Now we're getting. I love this. I want to know what you do. Uh, retired food scientist. That is fascinating. I never even thought about that, that there's food scientists. But I mean, it makes perfect sense. Work for Kodak and Eastman Chem. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I was off the rails on a common sense logical train. That's a, that's about the best way to describe it. Um, oh, and I was thinking about it today. So here, I'm going to put in a link. This is kind of a fascinating uh, article I read today. Um, yeah. And you want to actually scroll way down. I'm, I got to read this before I, I miss it. You got to scroll down to this article, and I want you to read the part about the silencing of mass formation psychosis. Mass formation psychosis. That's what this uh, Dr. Malone calls it. But um, it's all psychology. It's all the stuff I've been talking about for months. But uh, that's a really interesting article. Boy, a lot of stuff coming out uh, about really negative, bad stuff about the jab. Wow. I mean, well... What, what would you expect from an experimental biological agent after all? All right, come on. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know about you. I'm not being a freaking lab rat. Not doing it. <laughs> uh, tech weenie extraordinary. Bingo. Exactly. All right. Uh, Vanessa. Bingo. Yeah, there we go. All right. You got it. Yeah. Now I'm, now I'm getting to know exactly what you do and what your expertise is that this is important because if I get a question, I, I know kind of who to go to. So this is very important. We need another chance. Ask the fed up builder. <laughs> no, I, I got enough to do. Good night. I got so much to do. John. All right. Superpowers. 35 years mobile. DJ. Oh, that's interesting. Lots of electrical wiring. Lots of do-it-yourself from automotive plumbing. Some construction. Good for you. Good for you. Um, I talked yesterday about fixing my truck over the weekend. Um the uh, you know the, the flexible brake on on the on the front wheels of a vehicle almost all of them the good knight will be able to tell me i know he's an expert in this they have to have a flexible brake line because those wheels move all right <laughs> and um so in other words they're metal small metal pipe eighth inch tubing but once it gets down to the wheel near the wheel it's got to transition to a rubber hose well the trouble with with at least the ones on ford vehicles is that as they age the inside part of that tubing can collapse and then when it does, the caliper thinks that the brake's on. And that's what happened to my truck. So I was just able to um, re to switch out the line. Brake works fine. Uh, so, John, that's a, that, you've got a lot of skills. That's good. That's good. Wow. Boy, the whole mobile DJ thing. How Think, think of how that's changed. I mean, I remember the old days where they had to cart around all that vinyl. And, um, you know, and then maybe cassette tapes. All right. And, and then DVDs. 
And now, what? What? You just have to take a laptop with you, <laughs> you know, and have a thousand or two thousand MP3s on it. Isn't that flipping amazing? Wow. Yeah, we need people with a special set of skills. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, so if you have any questions about your home, um, you need to put it in the chat. If you've not checked in, please do. I, I'm not telepathic, so I don't know what's wrong at your home. So you're here to ask questions. If you are if you just kind of dropped in and you wondered, well, because I got a comment about this yesterday from somebody watching the live stream. They, you know, I, I, um, I don't spend the whole live stream talking about the topic because that's not the point, because I, I want to talk about other things. And this guy kind of complained, like, you sure didn't talk about the roof fence very long. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So, you know, and, and I mean, you know, it, it, the thing is, you, you, you can't satisfy everybody. I, I already know that. I don't even try. I don't try. Don't try. Um, all right. So if you have any questions about your home, please type them in the chat. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Um, well, I'll tell you a little bit about the radio adventure today. Uh, there is a really neat place we go to. My, my, um, you need to understand this. So I was, um, I'll, I'll give you a little history about my ra ham radio real quickly. I was originally licensed back in Ohio. I think I, I could get out of the drawer, but I'm, I'm only going to be off a year or two, uh, 2003, maybe 2004. Um, I couldn't, uh, and a buddy of mine out in Idaho was the one who got me interested. And, you know, he was 2000 miles away. Right. So it's a very complex hobby. And, and I, I tried to go to some of the local clubs. There were three clubs in Cincinnati, all a bunch of uh, dysfunctional people. They, they don't have any. M m and, and that's the psychodemographic analysis of the average ham radio person is a is a, a person lacking social skills. I mean, think about it. They want to sit in a dark basement and talk to people they can't even see. I mean, really, that's the <laughs> I'm not saying they're all that way. I'm just saying <laughs> anyway. Um, so, you know, when you go to a meeting, you know, they, they don't even say hi. They don't welcome you. There's not a greeter there like, hey, you look new. Uh, what's going on? Who are you? You know, nothing like that at all. So within a few months, I just dropped out of the hobby. Like, this is too hard. Uh, I got back into it in 2011. So 11 years ago. And a um, couple of years later, I met this person, Jim Cluett. And very private person, very private but we kind of clicked it off right away. And his specialty, he is, what's cool about ham radio for what it's worth is it's this really wide hobby. I mean, like so wide, like this wide, all right, off screen wide. And for example, there are some people who are interested in digital, all right, where I'm serious. You just need the people who love computers and they hook their computer up to the radio and magic happens. I don't like that. There are other people who just want to communicate with satellites by ham radio. There are some people who just want to bounce their radio signal off the flipping moon and have it bounce back, and they talk to somebody that way. It's crazy. You can do all kinds of things. But my buddy, he happens to, what he likes to do, he loves nature, so he loves to go out and hike, and he's got tiny little radios, throw a little wire up into a tree, hook it up, get on the air and talk with people in Europe or wherever. So, so he taught me how to do all that. And it's an amazing skill to have. It's an amazing skill. Not many people can do it. And so today, a beautiful day here earlier, it's kind of getting overcast now because we're starting to have some rain come in tonight. But uh, we went down to the Pemi Jawasset River. So if you look on the map of central New Hampshire, look up the town of Bristol. So Bristol, New Hampshire, and if you really want to see something cool, um, type into Google Maps Profile Falls. So Profile Falls, Bristol, New Hampshire. And you'll see all kinds of images, beautiful waterfalls, blah, blah, blah. So that's where we go. But we walk down this road and we go to the river and hardly anybody goes down to the river, you know, down to the Pemi. And we call it the Pemi instead of Pemi Jawasset. That the Pemi Jawasset is an Indian name. And... It's in this giant, huge flood control area owned by the Army Corps of Engineers, and like 3,000, 4,000 acres. And it's just amazing. I mean, it's like eight, 10 miles long, maybe 
a mile too wide. It's crazy, crazy. Hardly anybody goes down here. It was such a beautiful time. They got picnic tables you can set up on. I've got, a, I mean, I wish that's what I hate about this. I know I could use other software. I, I wish I could show you. I'll put it in Discord. I'll put it in Discord later. The couple of photos I took today. But uh, just sitting right by the river on a picnic table, it was just wonderful. I made uh, six contacts, uh, worked at European Station. I think the other ones I, were all domestic. But it's not on you. I, I heard this one. Actually, I'm going to look it up. I, I, it was a pileup. I was trying, you know, I'm using low power. That's the trouble. You know, when you're out doing this kind of radio, you know, only using like five, 10 watts. But uh, I worked this, uh, there was this guy on, his call sign was TA7S. And I'm trying to think of where was this guy? But everybody wanted to work him. And I was trying and trying and trying. Uh, Turkey. Yeah, that's what I thought. Turkey. Um, what a shame. And he must be a new guy because this is hard to believe. It's only, only 860 people have looked up his call sign. He was a pretty good Morse code guy. So anyway, crutch word. Uh, <laughs> crutch word alert. Um, getting back on here with live stream. So ham radio was just wonderful today. And, and just like anything else, you know, you need to get up here. Here, I'll teach you something right now. This is really important. So I'm a professional writer. Words are really interesting. I'm really interested in just words. I'm especially interested in really good writing, really great lines of script, whether it's in a book or whether it's in a, uh, a movie. For example, the most powerful quote uh, in the whole, in the whole, in five book series, five book series of, of um, Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's in book one, about a third of the way through, maybe even just a fourth of the way into the book. Queen Cersei says to Ned Stark out in this courtyard. And she, Ned, Ned Stark had got to route up a little bit, man. And she said, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. And that, that's the whole theme of the entire book. All right. So think about this word. Um, like your town, like, let's just say, let's just say, um, like Cincinnati, I, 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 where I'm from. So in Cincinnati, they had the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. Okay, the Cincinnati Recreation Commission. So what, what do you think they did? What, what, do you, what do you think they were in charge of? Okay, like the parks, the swimming pools, you know, whatever, tennis courts, baseball diamonds, right? Running paths. Have you ever thought about the word recreation? What? How is recreation built? It's built from the word re, re, recreate. Recreate. Get that? So you have to break apart it into two, you know, two things. Recreate. So when you recreate, what do you do? You recreate yourself. You reinvigorate yourself. That's why it's important to have days off. That's why it's important not to work your freaking fingers to the bone. And here in America, I don't know, we may be changing, but here in America, I think a lot of people will say that we live to work. And in other parts of the world, like in Jamaica and other places that they figured it out, it's the opposite. They work to live. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so in other words, it was really, it's really important to get out and get away from monitor, get away from phone calls. It's so important. And if you're not doing enough of that, you need to do more of it. All right. Let me, uh, get caught up here. Um, I'm getting caught up on this stuff on that comments. Um, yes, I, I read that whole article, Will, about the listening post. Fascinating. Uh, I've got it. I've got it saved. Comp, com something hill, not compost. Um, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Such so interesting. Uh, give me all operational contingency in my is my mantra. Yeah, moon bounce. Yeah, exactly. Um, John. Hey Tim. I just log. I'm just logging in. Do you? Do, yes. I I did go over it. Um, 
what question do you have about it, John? Ask me a question about the boot. What do you want to know? Here, you probably, you might want to know. So I, let me go back and get the link to it. Um, trying to find the, uh, trying to get the, here we go. I'm, I'm coming back, John. Hello, Marcus. Uh, so, John, uh, go to this link I just put in. Uh, you'll see the plumbing boot flashing. That's the best one made. And I have a link on the page how to buy it. Best one. Best, best one. So, so if that doesn't answer your question, then ask me what you want to know. And I'll get to it. Uh, carpe diem, right. Exactly. Live for today. Um, I, I hit, took two years of Latin, failed both years, went to summer school. <laughs> Don, 88 years old. What a guy, man. Flipping. Congratulations, man. You've made it pretty far down the timeline. Good for you. I'm 18 years behind you. Retired electrical engineer. There you go. Good for you. Uh, I love electrical engineers. Uh, do some single story building, stay up. Yeah, exactly. Worked uh, my under my 57, oh, 57 Chevy. Oh, my God. What beautiful cars. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for your kind words. Thanks for your kind words. Um, Chomp Post still. That's it. Chomp Post. I, yeah, I was Chomp Mist. Sorry. Chomp Mist. Chomp Mist. Chomp Mist Hill. And it's the sad thing is, in its heyday, it was, what, 180-something acres, and now it's down to, like, four or five. You know, they sold a bunch of it off. All the cool stuff's gone. If we drove by it, you know, it just looked like any other piece of residential property or farm property. Uh, I, okay, here, John says, I just want to say I hate those cheap plastic boots. Uh, yeah, so lead's okay, but this other boot that I just showed you, it's got a very, it's got a siliconized rubber boot. It's not the just the crappy rubber boots on the aluminum ones. And I show in the video, I show in my video that I pasted, go to that page, watch the video. You'll see the old original thing I take out, all cracked, leaks, horrible. Uh, this this one that I have on my roof, uh, I don't know, it could last 50, 100 years. So lead's okay. Lead's not bad. Not bad. Um Awesome. Okay. Any other questions about anything? Happy to answer them. Uh, got quite a few people here. You might not have checked in. If you haven't checked in, uh, I I like for you to check in. And as you can tell, like Don just did, I, I want you to list your superpowers. All right. What what What's your superpower or two? If you have two or three, list them because you may be able to help me. All right. All right. All right. So, um, Electronics, like I'm a little weak on electronics, even though I'm a ham radio operator. It's, uh, I mean, boy, electronics. Um, tell you what, it's pretty intense. I mean, there's a lot going on there. All right. So type, if you haven't checked in, check in, please. It's the polite thing to do. And just put in what, you know, if you have a superpower or two, love to know what it is. Uh, what other questions do you have for me? Let's see. What could it be? Um, um, electrician, plumbing, HVAC. Boy, John, you've done it all, man. You're um, good for you. Oh, so John, here, I'm going to share something with you. I'll be interested. So let me ask a question, John. Have you, um, um, have you, do you wire uh, single family homes? Have you done that as, as a profession or just as a sideline for to help people. I'm just curious. Um, Appalachian fishing. No, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't have a, I don't have a, it will not have a cleaning thing because um, I already have that video on stain solver. You can go to stainsolver.com, look in the videos. I show you how to clean a Trex deck. So just, just go, I already done that video. I, I have those videos on askthebuilder.com too. I actually show how to use stain solver to clean a wood deck. Um, uh, the door behind me is not closed all the way. You're correct. It is not. Uh, I could open it up a little bit. I'm trying to get a little air in here. I should open up a window. It's a little stuffy in here, a little warm. 
Um, High-end residential service. Repair. Okay. John, I think you're going to like this. Um, so my daughter built a new home up in Bar Harbor. We were working on it three years ago. In fact, it's March. So it was actually a really cold March up there. It was so cold. In March, I was doing, uh, we were, we were, we were finishing up on the um, radiant heating. Uh, we had to get that in. And then after we did the radiant heating, we ran the uh, PEX water lines. And then after I did that, I started on the electric. All right. And I knew that they were going to have a standby generator. So I, I, um, let me see what time it is. 105. I'm going to go, I'll eventually edit that out. All right. So 105. All right. So anyway, I, um, I said, listen, here's what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to, it's a really kind of a neat house, just a, a like a salt box, a, a New England salt box, two story rectangle, nothing, nothing fancy. And I said, I'm going to set up your lighting circuits. I'm just going to have four lighting circuits. And the only thing that's going to be on those circuits is just the lights. And I said, there's going to be two circuits downstairs and two circuits upstairs. And I said, the reason I'm doing that is, and I'm going to put those on the generator. So if you have a power outage, because what's the biggest pain in the butt if you've ever had a power outage? Seriously, when you think about it, the biggest pain in the butt is walking around with a flashlight. I'll never forget down in my, my father-in-law's house, he would have a Coleman lantern sitting on the ki kitchen table, you know, with the little kerosene lamps or white gas burning, you know, flipping Coleman lantern you know, walking around with a flashlight, it's pitch black. It's horrible. It's depressing. And, and, and now with modern LED light bulbs that, that consume so little power, it's not a really, a, it's not a hardship for the generator. It's not really stealing a lot of power from it. And I said, but I said, you're going to have a problem with it, just so you know. I said, if you have an extended power outage up here, your neighbors are going to come knocking on your door because they're going to wonder why does the electric, is it the electric on at your house but not their houses because their houses are all going to be dark and, and maybe one light works or two lights work here and there, but all of your lights could be on. So just be prepared. And they actually had one. She said, dad, it was wonderful. We had the lights on. It was just like nothing ever went. It's like we didn't have a power outage. So, so anyway, John, just a little tip. Uh, yeah, of course, all the regular things are on the generator, you know, that you normally would have, but I'm just saying most, the, the problem is, if you're watching this right now and you don't know anything about how to wire a home, here's how most electricians wire a home. They'll run a circuit. They're running, they're daisy chaining the wire between outlets. And at some point they take off an outlet and they go to a switch box. And, you know, that's how the power eventually gets up to the light overhead. Well, in a standby generator, unless you're extremely wealthy, you are not going to put a lot of those circuits in the house that power the outlets, you're not going to put this on. You're only going to have a few of those work because you have more important things to need the electric for. You, you know, refrigerator, well pump, uh, furnace, boiler, uh, oven, what, whatever, microwave, all these other important things, you know, lights are, lights are nice to have. Uh, so, so that's why the lights don't work when the power goes out because you don't have those things on your generator, generally speaking. But my daughter does, so it works really well. All right, let me get caught up on the uh, comments. Um, yeah, keeps the cats out. Um, uh, they don't come up here. They're not allowed out of the house. I'm in the garage. After Oh, you deal with stuff after it's been surveyed. Bridge designer, there he goes. Yeah, I was kind of close. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, Sean. Hi, Sean. How you doing? Greetings from Florida. No superpower. No. Yes, you do. Everybody has got superpowers. Everyone has got superpowers. Everyone. Just a mere mortal paid $109 to fill his... <laughs> I paid $90 on um, last Friday to fill my F-250. 20, 21 gallons. Um, John, I have a backup. My neighbor have finally caught on when they're sitting in the dark. Okay, Jason. Hi, Jason. I live in a house built in 1926 with no soffits. Okay, my son was just about ready to buy a house like that. He, he, he didn't get it. 12 offers on this house. 12 offers. 
Uh, just a wonder to let Aaron, what you, okay. Well, John, let me ask, Jason, I'm sorry. Uh, what are you, are you just trying to get, are you trying to get Aaron to the attic? Is that, is that what you're trying to, um, is that what you're trying to do? I need to know because opening a window is not going to get Aaron to your attic. So, so tell me what, where you're trying to get air into the house. I need to know that. Um, I need to know where you want the air to, where, where do you want this air to go? I'm thinking you want it to go to the attic. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Um, years ago, I don't know if they're still made. They used to make a hidden soffit vent that actually went in the gutter board, you know, behind the gutter. So let me, um, let me type that into Google. See, let me let me type it in. See if I can find one for you. Seeing what I can find here for you, Commander. Sometime today. Um. May have found something. Um, maybe this is maybe it's a big maybe. I'm 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 clicking an ad. Too bad for them. Sorry about that. But that that's actually a a, a good little thing to tell you. By the way, um, I'm reading it. In this, it says right here, it says, designed to be mounted inside standard 24-inch spaced rafters. Um, uh, I may have found this thing for you. Maybe. This is a big maybe. So I'm going to give you this, uh, this big, long URL because it's got the tracking in it. Um, Maybe this would work. You know, you'd have to cut a um, slot in the gutter board. It, it's not easy to do, but there's a way to do it. Um, so uh, <laughs> show us on the flipping whiteboard. I, there is no whiteboard. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. <laughs> Guess where I was this morning. 200 feet away. <laughs> anyway. Um, you, at the very least, but the trouble is it depends, you, you know, you might have to modify your fin gutters. That's the trouble. You, imagine this. Imagine how you could have a, um, uh, you, you could do a couple of things. I mean, there's there's a way to do it, but it's, it's kind of problematic. You can, you can pad out your the end of your rafter tails a couple of inches and put in a regular soffit strip. So it can be done. In other words, in other words, if especially since you're getting a new roof, you have an opportunity to do this. Meaning, if you take off your gutters and you take off your gutter board, and then you were to put, add on like a a uh, two by six, you know that you cut, you know you chamfered the edge so it matches the roof pitch. Now you've put the gutter board out an inch and a half away. So if you add another board and get it enough out so that you can put a regular soffit strip in, bingo, problem solved. So you can put in a very narrow soffit. You just have to add on to the rafter tails. And then it's easy to add another strip of sheathing, like a, like a furring strip or, or whatever, so that you have a positive wood connection. So that's probably what you're going to have to do. If you... If you don't understand how to do this, uh, if you can jump a 15-minute phone call with me. I'll draw it up for you. I'll draw it up and show you exactly what to do. And uh, I just take that little bit of time off the uh, the 15-minute call, and then you've got an exact drawing of exactly what to do. So it's up to you. So that's probably what that's how I would handle it. And then you then then we don't then we can get the proper flashing up by the gutter again, and you've got a true little soffit. You've got the the little soffit strip. So anyway, 
And if you want me, if you want me to give you the link on how to set up the phone call, I'm trying to do it right now. Um, I, I have the old, the, um, I'm coming up with it right now. Um, All right. I'm getting the link. Everything's a little slow today. Pretty excited about my new Mac Mini coming. I'm hoping everything's going to be a little faster. This computer I use is 13 years old. So it's it's really, it's it's. I'm surprised it's lasted this long. All right, so Jason, um, if you want me to draw it all up for you, blah, 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 so you know exactly what to do, the best way, just go to that link, click it, order that, and I'll take care of it. Um, all right, um, what questions do you have? Any questions that I can answer? This is about where I went off the rails yesterday, about an hour 16 in. No, when, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm running... Who knows? I could be running High Sierra. I, I don't know. I don't know. So I'm a Mac guy. I'm not. I'm a, I'm a Mac guy. I'm I'm not. I got upset at Bill Gates about. Uh, I can tell you how long ago it was. 15, 16 years ago. It was it. I went on this horrible cursing tirade. Was so angry. I jumped up out of my chair, and I told Kathy, "I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going up to Kenwood Mall. I'll be back." And I went up and bought my first Apple computer. I had I was done with Bill Gates, done with that guy. All right, Jason, you're welcome. Just it's the I can tell you right now, it's the best money you're going to spend on this job, the best money. And if you're not satisfied, it's free. I closed the gates, buddy. Yeah, that's I'm done with that guy. That guy is so bad. Man, I mean, he's worse than Rockefeller, the original John D. Rockefeller. And he was bad. You want me to talk about John D. Rockefeller, what I know about him? You want you want me to that? That's some history. I mean, the Rockefellers have done a really good job of trying to sanitize his name, just like Bill Gates did. Bill Gates was hated. He was hated back in the 1980s, man. Kind of went undercover spent millions of dollars on public relations to, to make him come out like this angel. Here's this guy, this guy, think about, think about Bill Gates. He's going around the world talking about vaccines and all this other stuff. He's not even a flipping doctor. All right. John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller probably born, I don't know, 1850? I don't know, 1840? It's very possible he was the richest man in the world ever. If, if you if you go back and look at the money he made and um, equated in today's dollars. Um, he pretty much cornered the oil market and he completely verticalized the, ver the oil market. He I mean, this is why they eventually, I think the government passed all these antitrust things where you can't have monopolies. All right. I mean, he, he was in charge of the oil from when it came out of the ground till it got to your house. All right. So he he was taking profit everywhere and completely was able to manip manipulate the price, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, so old John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do have an Apple laptop, too. Um, it's my daughter's. My, it was my daughter's old laptop. I, she was going to throw it away. I said, no, 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 no. I, I'll take it. I'll take it. So I just put a new hard drive in it and upgraded the memory. I, I did it all myself anyway. So um, John D. Rockefeller back in the um, early 1900s figured out that you could use oil. I mean, I'm talking crude oil, you know, the stuff that we make into gasoline and kerosene and diesel fuel that you could, that that was the basic building block to build drugs, modern drugs. My mom was one of the first pharmacists in the state of Ohio. And I remember as a kid, she was telling me about how, oh, you know, back in the day, uh, drugs were just made from plants, plants. That's all, they just use plants, right? Well, all right, now, this is where it gets interesting. All right, um, 
So do you, do, are you aware of what's happened? And now make sure somebody gets me back on the rails. If I, I'm going to fall off here, <laughs> but you got to pick up where I was talking in case I get screwed up here. So why have you, have you put together my friend that I was talking about yesterday, unfortunately, this, this woman, she, she thinks I'm absolutely crazy. She thinks I'm nuts. She thinks I'm crazy. Because she's she she's taken this big giant pipe this big and just has it connected to her face drinking the Kool-Aid. All right. If you've paid attention over the past two years about the illness, why why were they, and they are the people that hate us. When I say they, I mean the people that hate us. There's only there's there's a small there's there's few of them but there's many of us. We've got them by probably uh, I don't know five hundred thousand to one the odds. They played the scarcity card. All right, so I talked about this. I talk about the scarcity card a lot. If you if you've not read this book, I'm gonna I I gotta put this in here. You have got to go buy that book and read it. It tell it, it tells you what the hell is going on, all right? It tells you all about psychology and how psychology is used to control you. You're being controlled. You may not realize it. But you you could be controlled at the grocery store, you can be controlled at the car dealership. The pros who know how to do this, they know how to do it. All right. The um so the most powerful psychological trigger of all is scarcity, all right? Scarcity. I've already talked about that today. So what has happened over the past two years? How have they played the scarcity card? The people that hate us said, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. You better put the face diaper on. You better put two of them on. You better get jabbed. You're going to die. All right, that's playing the scarcity card. So one of the most precious things to the average human being, and especially somebody who is civilized, is their health. Why do you think um, Big Pharma makes so much money? Why do you think um, doctors are so well paid for the most part? Um, why do you think, um, in other words, health is important to people. Because they know if they don't take good care of themselves, they're going to what? Die. Most people don't want to die. John Rockefeller knew this. Okay, so I'm back on John. So you have to understand that. You have to have that context to understand where we're going. So John Rockefeller, smart guy. He goes, people really care about their health. They'll, um, you know, so anyway, so here's what he did. <laughs> He starts to take over all of the medical schools. I'm serious. Took over the medical schools. You know, he could buy them. He could buy, I'm just going to buy the freaking medical schools. And then he started indoctrinating young doctors and saying, all of the homeopathic stuff is bad. We're not doing that anymore. That's all blase. Who cares that the Indians did it? We don't care. We're not doing that stuff. We're going to use these modern, flipping, amazing, flipping modern drugs. Who do you think started the American Cancer Society? John D. Rockefeller. Bad guy. Bad guy, man. I mean, and, and if you look back through history, this is kind of interesting. You know, cancer was not a really big thing. Now, granted, back in the old days, people didn't live as long as we're living now. Okay, I get that. But... Cancer, you go back through history and look at cancer, cancer was not a big thing. And, and if it was, do, do you understand that God is constantly, um, God is experimenting all the time? I mean, you understand that? In other words, that's why, uh, you know, that's why, that's like my son. That's why my son has fair skin. So does my wife. Um, 
God experiments all the time. All right, well, sometimes the experiments don't work out so well. And that person might get predisposed to cancer. I mean, that's why some poor young children, we have young children who get cancer. All right, well, that might be John, Don, John Rockefeller's fault, but even in the old days, a young kid might have gotten cancer. But you go back in history, cancer was, wasn't a lot of cancer. If you, you <laughs> all right, and I'll tell you something else about drugs, and then we'll get on it. This, this is a really off the rails thing. Um, you know, all these crazy mass shootings, you know, like Columbine and these school shooters and these people that shoot things up, you know? You notice that you're, you, you, the reporters aren't allowed to ask, oh, uh, is there any chance that that person was on psychotropic drugs? Was he, was he being treated for depression? They were using psychotropic drugs? So if you go back and look at the introduction of psychotropic drugs, if you don't know what a psychotropic drug is, go look it up. If you go look at when they were introduced, you'll see before that time, we didn't really have school shootings or any kind of shootings like that. It didn't happen. As soon as we introduced psychotropic drugs, school shootings. I had a friend of mine, a friend of mine. He was an RN. He was an RN. Wife, three kids up in uh, Wisconsin. It made the news. You can go look it up. He was an RN. Uh, he had the same thing happen to his business that happened to mine. Uh, he lost a lot of it. He lost 95% of his revenue overnight. Um, he got depressed. He, they put him on psychotropic drugs. One night, he loaded up a shotgun, went in and killed. He blew the head off all three of his kids in bed. And his wife heard it. And for whatever reason, he decided to kill her last. She's trying to call 911. He kills her. And then he goes down to the garage and blows his head off. What? No normal person would ever do that. No, would not happen. So you got John D. Rockefeller to thank for that. Indirectly. All right. That's John D. Rockefeller for you. Bad man. Very bad man. Yeah, fear, fear. This friend of mine that my, she was my first girlfriend. Her whole life is consumed by fear. Right now she fears everything. She is so afraid of dying. And she's just ruined her life. It's just horrible. It's horrible. All right, back. Uh, all right. Um, lemmings, yeah, exactly. All right, so... Um, Uh, interesting. Now I'm how's the old note eight? Um, so I got uh, so Vanessa. I um, you might find this interesting. I um, I kind of took the Kool Aid. My son, he, I he, my son's got some good advice, and he said, "Dad, when your cell phone goes bad, you really need to look look at the Google Pixel." So I bought, well, yeah, I bought this Google Pixel 5a about a year ago, I think. I don't know. Fantastic deal. It's only 200 and something bucks. It's because they were just getting ready to bring out the Pixel 6.0. And um, a fantastic, it's been a fantastic phone. So I can't say enough about the Google Pixel. I can tell you that. Uh, I agree. Drugs can save your life or kill you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh um, all right. Um, any other? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, she does. Yes. Very interesting. What's the connection? Why did you ask me that question? Apple Fisherman, Fisherman, tell me why you asked. What, what's the connection? So, Vanessa, look at um, check out check out the Google Pixel. And oh, just so you know, I'll talk about this real quick. Um, I don't, you know, I used to use T-Mobile. I've been on a bunch of different stuff. You know who I use for my cell phone plan? Google Fi. Have you heard about that? Do you know anything about Google Fi? Um, um, so Google Fi. So, you know, I'll type, just put it in here. So the Fi is just short for Wi-Fi. 
Right. So uh, I switched to Google Fi a year and a half ago, maybe a little longer. I had cut my cell phone bill in half. And I'm lucky because 99% of the time I'm around Wi-Fi. So all my cell phone calls are via, you know, voice over IP. Um, when I do go out, like I was today, if I understand how it works, I, I wouldn't, I would maybe bet $10 on this. That's about all. But evidently Google has a, has a deal with all many of the cell phone carriers and the phone automatically hunts for the strongest signal and connects to that cell phone network. So you're not tied into just Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever. Uh, it's flipping amazing. You know, and it cut my flipping phone bill in half. So um, anyway, uh, I would just recommend if you just look into Google Fi, you might save a lot of money. I, I swear by it. It's a great, great plan. Okay, OCD can consume perspective point of being. Um, I wouldn't say she's that, but she is OCD, uh, I would say. If she's watching, she's going to be so angry. That's it. She'll get over it like a bad cold, I hope. If not, I, I, I've tried to help this woman. I've just about given up, seriously, just because... Uh, because of what I, because of this, I, I told, I, I typed this in earlier. I'm telling you, you've got to go read this. You got to, I'm going to type in a, uh, a URL and you've got to go scroll down to the part that says the silencing of mass formation psychosis, mass formation psychosis. So slide down and read that. That's what I've been talking about for months and months and months. It's just a fancy name for it. It's all the psychology that's being used in that book up above that I told you to buy. Get that book by Dr. Cialdini. Read the influence book. Um, okay, Will, upgraded from Samsung 3. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, sheep are going to sheep. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, all right, any last question? I know we have a lot of people here. Um, if you have a question about your home, now's the time to ask. You know, I go off the rails sometimes. And here's what this is why this happens, because if you don't if you don't ask me questions in the chat, then I just go off randomly and talk about things. You may like that, but I'm just saying I'm here to save you money. I'm not here to convince you to to get jabbed or not get jabbed. I'm I'm here, but I am here to try to convince you to wake the hell up if you haven't woken up yet. I can tell you that. Um yeah, I understand, Vanessa. I got it. I got it. But, and I am no medical expert, but I can tell you this much. My wife saved my life uh, this past, last summer when I got COVID. It was her. It was my doctor did nothing. My doctor, my doctor, and I'm never going to him again. I'm done with this guy. Said that, nah, he, he like scoffed. I like, like, hydroxychloroquine, are you kidding me? Ivermectin? No way. No way. So, you know, so he's drank the Kool-Aid. You know, he drank the Kool-Aid because the AMA is forcing stuff down on him. Uh, so, and it's a known fact that drugs work against the illness. And so does quercetin. So if you can, if you want to read how my wife saved my life, just go to my website and type COVID in, Ty type it in, type it in to ask the builder. Uh, yeah, no, no, no worries, Vanessa. Don't worry. Uh, d there's no rush. Uh, <laughs> Appalachian fish, I enjoy going off the rails. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, hi, Songbird. Uh, oh, one thing I'm going to be trying. So that once again, I talked to my son, uh, but I haven't had a bad day just yet. Um, so I was with my son on Saturday, and uh, we got talking about tinnitus. And, you know, and I have tinnitus. But like I said, mine's kind of unusual. Some days it'll be a one, and other days it'll be a six or an eight, you know. So... It was a six that Saturday. Well, he gave me this rice cake that's got the, he's an expert in this stuff. You know, it has, I'm going to just say it's, it's, it's got the, the active chemical that's in hemp. So it's not marijuana. I mean, but it's just, but it's the same types of evidently. All right. I don't know. There's all these different, whatever. All right. And he, he told a funny story. This bar has got on the front 50 milligrams. So it's a, like a, it looks like a granola bar. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and and he um um he didn't read the instructions closely whatever 
So he eats the whole thing. <laughs> and you're only supposed to take five milligrams. And it's just like, whoa. I mean, he got this big buzz on. And he said, I had to lay down on the couch for like four or five hours. <laughs> so he warned me. He said, Dad, Dad, do not. He said, you've got to cut this thing up into into tenth. You know, don't, don't, only, don't, don't, you know, so. So I have to wait for a day when my tinnitus is kind of bad and I'm not kind of going to go anywhere. And and because he, he's really curious, he wants to see he wants me to really kind of pay attention. Like he says, it's going to take about an hour for it to start to work. But he wants to see if after an hour the tinnitus goes down. So we'll see. But I, I already know how to control it. I've got a column on my website about it. Uh, can Yeah. Cannabinoids. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. My son's in, he knows all about it. Yeah, CBD. Yes, yes. I. Anyway, um, yes. <laughs> Bingo. All right. Yeah, I don't. I I just know that he knows a lot about it, and he he's gotten great relief because he's had he's had some he had some shoulder issues. Totally got rid of it. He's fine. I, it's crazy. So, but I'm a big believer in it because of my mom being a pharmacist, telling me all about how drugs used to be made. Oh, and by the way, Rockefeller got rid of all that stuff. Well, he, did, he tried, but there's still a lot of it around. Rockefeller did everything he could possibly do to get rid of all of the books and all of the stuff about all the homeopathic, all the natural ways to heal people. Bad man. Bad, bad guy. Bad guy. Um, Michael, who's here? Is somebody here that I don't know about? Um. Yes, pain management. There you go. Exactly. Right. So um, anyway, I'm going to try it. See what happens with my uh, tinnitus. Um, all right. Any other questions? If not, I think I'll get out of here. Um, my tomato plants are doing pretty good. I don't know if they got sunburned today. They, I think they, they got dried out a little bit. I better not have killed them. I, I'm trying to be careful not to overwater them. So... Um, uh, anyway, they're, they, they look a little wilted, but I watered them before. We'll see if they come back. Um, all right. Any other questions about your house? Um, oh, hi, Songbird. I see. Um, now I'm starting to understand it. Uh, if you have any questions about your house, I'm happy to answer them real fast before I get out of here. Um, I'm going to, I got to get my log book up to date of the contacts from tomato plants. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. That's a little, little wilted, but. Look at the uh, leaves, how they're kind of curled in. I uh, I watered it. It should be okay. I hope I didn't kill it. We'll see. I'd be really disappointed because I'd have to start over. Um, but I uh, I don't want to overwater them either. You know, there's no water in the dish. So anyway, we'll see. Tomorrow we're supposed to get. Uh, let me look, check the forecast. The the forecast keeps changing, but I think last time I checked. Remind me later. Um, not doing that right now. Last time I checked, let's get like three quarters of an inch of rain tomorrow. Huh? What? The? Well, now it's down to six tenths of an inch. So um, here we are. You kidding me? I mean, of course, this is New Hampshire. There's a winter weather advisory up right now. Give me a break. Give me a break. Blah, blah, blah. Ice and snow. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Flipping winter weather advisory. Are you kidding me? Um, so uh, my tomato plants are Rutgers, the Rutgers variety. So so I think, it's, I think Rutgers is an heirloom. You know, it's an old, old, uh, old variety, really meaty. Uh, they're about the size of a baseball. They're not the big giant ones, you know. Golf Friday if no snow. Good for you. Jeez. I'm going to have to go out twice. I've decided. I thought, man, I can't go to my first league game rusty. I mean, I cannot go and play in the flipping league the first time and that be my first swing of the season. So I'm going to have to go down to Lockmere and play nine holes, you know, in the next month in April sometime. All right, um, I'm going to go. 
Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, cross your fingers that my tomato plants come back, that I didn't kill the damn things. Um, and I will. I should be here tomorrow because I'm. I'm not going out tomorrow. It's going to be rainy. Uh, or I know. Get to the driving range. No, I'm going. I'll just play nine holes. You know, I'll just play nine. I hope that. If, I hope eventually you you can come over, Will, and play this course. It's it's an amazing flipping course. Of course, I mean, it, I now that I think about it, it, might be really hard to impress you, because you're you're above a hacker. I mean, you're, 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 you've got a much higher, you know, you might not be satisfied until you play. Um, um, I played that one course that the pros played out, out on the beach uh, above San Diego. What's the name of that course? Torrey Pines. I've played Torrey Pines. It's just a municipal golf course. I mean, it's not that special. Um, I have played at quite a few country clubs um, back in Cincinnati, but this lock mirror, is as good as any country club I've ever played in Cincinnati. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I would love for you to come over and play. It's a great course. It really is a great course. I mean, there's some holes, man. Well, I've got that video of the one. It just, it used to be a really hard hole. It was a par four where you had to hit to a landing area. And then you had to go from the landing area to the green over this big flipping valley. And, um, they got so many complaints that they changed it, that they made the landing area, the tee boxes, <laughs> you know, cause people were getting like sixes and sevens on this hole. Right. So, cause if you miss the landing area, it's over, you're done. You're freaking toast. And if you are short of the landing area, it's so flipping long to get to the green. It was a tough hole. I mean, just rips your freaking heart out. All right. So anyway, uh, wow. Nine holes in Arizona. So anyway, um, Anyway, <laughs> looking forward, looking forward. Yeah, busy this time of year. Actually, absolutely. All right, I'm going to go. Thanks for being here today. And um, if you've not signed up for my newsletter, go to the website and do it. It's right on the homepage. Uh, if you have not joined the Discord, you should join it. The uh, Good night. Put the link in right there. Uh, we're starting to get more people there. And when we get to 500 or 1,000, I think we're going to we're going to start to get to, to uh, critical mass. Vanessa, thanks for being here today. If you're still here, good night. Always helpful. Will, Songbird. We've got a lot of people that are here today. Uh, Josh, uh, so many. I have to go back up and look. I, I think I said Vanessa. Um, so many. Um, Jason, a lot of people. All right. So thanks for being here. You're the one who make the live stream happen. I mean, I if you weren't here, I wouldn't do it. It'd be, it'd be crazy. So I should be here tomorrow. Absolutely. Not a, not a problem. I mean, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a rain day. It's going to be a nasty cold rain day. So that I knew that coming up, that was not going to be good. That's why I went out today. Had a great time out today. Wow. Mm, Got to recreate. Got to recreate. Recreate. That's the word. Remember? Recreate. So, all right. Thanks so much for being here. Um, let's see if there's any questions before I leave. Join the discord. Okay. All right. We have cookies. Thanks very much. Thanks, Will. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Good night. Uh, thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks, Appalachia. Fisherman, of course. Tomatoes, right. Yes, tomatoes. Come back. Those leaves are curled. Come on. Stop that. Don't be curled anymore. I'll, maybe I'll give them a, bit, a little bit more water. All right. So anyway, uh, we missed Steve. He didn't, wasn't here. All right. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder. Uh, if you have any questions in between live streams, go to the Discord or go to askthebuilder.com and hit the Ask Tim question. All right. Have a great night. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder here on YouTube.